103? No, I tell a lie. It's 107. And the air condition is rooted. Welcome to Purgatory South. I know it well. Coke's cold anyway. I have a picture here. It's Ben. Benjamin Franklin. That's Ben and that's me. The real problem is, Mrs. Strelow, we don't... Strelow. Miss Strelow. We, we don't do this. We're not the people to help you. I mean, our equipment here is meant... Could register in footsteps? Well, yes, footsteps but... Footsteps can make the needle jump. Benny. My Ben, he's out there in the tunnel, in the darkness. And you've got the equipment to find him. Copy down, okay? Yeah, skull. Madam? Perhaps you would show this young man the photo. Well, thank you, madam. I've been called uh, young in a long time. <laughs> She's lost her dog. Really? 
That bitch is four years old. Four? So when Mr. Franklin, God rest his soul, brought me the two puppies, he said, which do you prefer, Lucy or Ben? And I, without a moment's hesitation, I said, the little brown one. Oh, he was so cute and funny. It's true, our instruments are very sensitive. They can pick up the tiniest movement, footsteps, anything. But they'd have to occur right next to the measurement probe. Then you can find him. It's possible. But we'd have to bore probes in the whole mining area. That'd mean at least 5,000 borings. My Ben, he's lost out there in a tunnel. In the darkness. Be blasting again soon. You gotta move. Boom, boom, quick, quick, understand? You've never been here before. Why all of a sudden you just what are you doing here anyway, eh? We are keeping watch. This place. Come in. Lot 252 ready to go, Mr. Hackett. Beauty, let's do it now, OK? Right. Anything wrong? The boys would like to wish you luck. Thanks, Laurie. Like, I mean, after all the trouble you had with the company, getting approval to do the tests out here, where you said, it's good to see it happen. Come in, Cole, over. I'm here, my Commandant. Get the boys back. Tell them with any luck there'll be champagne and buckets for everyone tonight. Because I'm laying five to one and I'm not a betting man that they go off their brains at headquarters when they see what we're sitting on out here, okay? Everything okay here. Waiting for the girl. Over. Signal. Test. On. Running. 30 seconds.
What's happening out there? The impulse has gone dead. What the fuck do you think's happening? They cut the cable, and thank Christ they did. Cut the cable? Come on out, some fucking bones gone crazy. What's going on here? Can anyone tell me why someone ran into the middle of our test? What's he saying? There will be no digging and there will be no plasting. Oh, I see. And may I ever so politely ask why? This is the place where the green ants dream. Ants! Green ants dreaming here? Cold? Why the fuck can't they dream somewhere else? Cold! Calm down. Get someone to check the ignition cable. I'll see if I can contact headquarters. Calling headquarters, calling headquarters. This is Mintabi Test 252. Lance, is that you? Nancy here. Uh, hello, kid. Uh, look, it's Ferguson there. I've got to speak with him. No, look, he's in Sydney with a little day. Tell him to contact the legal department. Say, it's like what happened in Arakoon when those blacks went berserk on that test site. And we're going to need the best legal advice. Hang on, hang on. Tell him to come up here straight away! Yes? Yes, Anthony. What's happening up here? Yes. Everyone's gone mad here today. I could have taken care of this easily. Nobody would have gotten more than a few scratches. Everything that happens here, henceforth, I want you to know, you caused it. Gentlemen, on behalf of Ayers Mining, I'd like to apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I... Gentlemen, my name's Ferguson, Baldwin Ferguson. I'm executive vice president of uh, Ayers Mining Company. I don't need to introduce you, Lance. Um, do you smoke? Please help yourselves. I, uh, I've been informed of the, uh, the incident yesterday. But I'd like to hear from your side what the background of the problem is. Who is your spokesman? Our spokesman is Melody P. He's the keeper of the song. I'm in trouble, Hilda's. 
so you're the tribal elder. Actually, they, they explained it to me yesterday. We mustn't disturb the dreaming of the green ants. We mustn't wake the green ants up. I, I admit that from the side of Ayers Mining, no inquiries have been put forth. Now, please allow me an explanation. Until today, we've lacked a representative to contact, or at least one legitimate person to address. At the same time, may I remind you that it didn't seem necessary because this is an area which doesn't bear the official status of a reservation. All of us, and that includes you, are subject to the binding strictures of the Land Rights Act of the Commonwealth of Australia. And we have countersigned and initialed all necessary contracts and all permissions have been procured. You tell me, what is the Land Rights Act? Because we have been here for 40,000 years, longer than hill camps. If you're going to mining in this land, you're going to destroy the land of crane hands. And crane hands will come out and destroy the whole universe world. What we're doing here is exploring an option. Hackett, please explain the nature of our activities. Uh, well, these are only preliminary tests. We don't yet know much about the geological substructure of the region. Uh, look, let me put it this way. If you have a tree trunk there in front of you, well, you don't yet know much about how it looks inside. So you tap it and listen and you can uh, see if it's hollow or not. Well, we're listening to the Earth's interior. You have to shoot us first before you move in. Well, that's an option we've not considered, naturally. But you must absolutely understand that we will take legal steps. We wish very much, Mr. Hackett, from your company to come and talk to us and stay with us. Well, that seems sensible. What do you say, Hackett? It's up to you. Look, I'm only a geologist. I'd rather think of you as an employee of Ayers Mining. Yeah. So I am. It was here. It was here that he was last seen. Yes, well, the real problem is that these northern tunnels here run into some natural caverns. They haven't been explored thoroughly yet, but we do know that they're pretty complicated. Rock formations are stable. They won't fall in or anything, but it's a, it's a real labyrinth. All sorts of levels. Then we need ladders. I don't think so. Anywhere we'd need a ladder to get to, he'd need a ladder to get to as well, if you take my meaning. But perhaps he fell down. He could have fallen down. Oh, my he could poor have. Ben.
I've been authorised by the Board of Directors to make the following proposals. Ayers Mining is prepared to make a substantial cash settlement, the value of which would buy you a new pumping station for your water, a bus to take your children the 10 miles or so into town for their schooling. Doctor, he says no. I've been authorised as well to uh, make a further proposal of a small percentage of the company's revenue from the mine if that mine proves productive which of course remains to be seen no it's also been proposed that a center for aboriginal art be constructed in the town at the company's expense and be completely under your administration. No, you don't understand. No, you're right. I don't. I'd, I'd like to. Are you Christian? Well, uh, I was raised that way. What would you do if I bring a bulldozer and dig up your church? Mr. Arnold in? No! I want to talk to him. No! It's important. I'm Lance Hackett from his mother. I know who you are. I want to talk to you about the local Aborigines. You've studied them. You must know them. I know nothing. Nothing! Except one thing. What? You better get out of here. Go back where you came from. Your civilization destroys everything, including itself. I heard all that at university. You know how you seem to me. Tell me. somebody on a train that's heading for an abyss. Up ahead, a bridge is down and the train is racing towards it. And only you know the bridge is down. And the communication cord is not working. And this train's going so fast towards its doom that all you have time to do is run through the train to the rear compartment.
good eye to you. Wonderful, wonderful. Have you come to see us? Uh, yes, I... I, uh... Can I help you? <laughs> no, no, not exactly. Thanks, anyway. I, I, I've got what I wanted. <laughs> well, ladies yeah, and gentlemen, yeah. now in your language, in Yonglo, come. One, two, three. What are you saying? Excuse me. I'm uh, I'm curious about something. You got a complaint made or what? No, 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 no. Come on, over here, over here. It's all right. It's all right. What's all that about? Well, it's a sacred site. There, beside the detergent. Yeah, it's where the one tree for miles around used to stand, and then we put up the shop. We cut down the tree, didn't we? They weren't too happy about that. Yeah, I can imagine. It's where their children are dreamed. That's what they reckon. First the fathers dream the children, and the children are born. And that's the only place the children can be dreamed? That's right. We used to chuck them out of there. They kept on coming back. And we sort of got used to them. We put things around the shelves that people don't buy much. Oil paint, boot polish. I belatedly formed the opinion they're good for business. More children, more customers. The world was as clear to me. I studied rocks and geological strata. I know that the earth is round and that it moves, but what shape the universe is and where it's going, I don't know. Stars have been discovered rushing with almost the speed of light away from us to the borders of the universe. And I can't rid myself of the feeling that 
one day someone will prove that the universe is like a snail shell coiling in on itself with an interior and no exterior and that these same stars that are rushing away from us are in fact on a collision course with us. There are mathematicians working on these theories. They call it curved space. <laughs> it's like this. A man hangs himself from a rope in a tree and just dangles there on his rope. Now, how many ropes would he need to be absolutely still? How many points of reference so that his position is fixed in a three-dimensional space. How many? One. One additional rope would do it. Then he wouldn't move anymore. But how many ropes would we need? How many ropes would the Earth need to be absolutely still in the universe? because everything moves. How could we become absolutely still? And what would these ropes be tied to? Your white men are lost. You don't understand the land. Too many silly questions. Your presence on this earth will come to an end. You have no sense, no purpose, no direction. I'm not getting anywhere with the Aborigines. Yeah, they've knocked back every proposal we've put up. Look, do us a favour, Nance, and send that talix to Sydney for me tonight, will you? Well, that way they'll have it on their desks first thing in the morning. Yeah. Well, I know about the interim order, yeah. What? The Commonwealth of Australia? Oh no, I thought it'd only be the Supreme Court. Nance, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm in my mobile home with the air conditioning on, all those erotic video cassettes that you'd really like, and a fridge full of stale cheese and half-empty bottles of Riesling. How about you? With James, eh? No, no, he's, he's a nice bloke, a South Australian. I, I'm not melancholic, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Well, have a good time, eh? Hmm. Good night. Melancholy, how could you melancholy? Or is it toothache? Busca a Pasarela, avanza Pasarela, hace zona el equipo peruano, va la pelota para Kemp, avanza Kemp, juega para Pasarela, bola para Kemp, entra Kemp, peligro de gol, entra área, peligro, va a tirar, tiró, gol, gol. I said it once and I'll say it again. Fucking dirty bludgeon bungs, look at them. All they're good for is getting drunk. What talent! What an example to the world! Get that out of here. Bloody bungs. Wish I'd never bloody come here. Bludges.
like to show you the lights of the city from my office tonight. It's on the 19th floor. It's a most marvelous view. Oh. Ah, having a bit of trouble there. Oof. I can't figure this out. How do you turn this thing off? <laughs> Have you got the instructions there, Jane? Even though we're opponents in this lawsuit, we thought we'd invite you as our guests so we, you can see our point of view. There's a great view from up here. Here we are, number 19. <laughs> Hello, what's going on? We seem to be stuck. Obviously. The 20th century should be called off for lack of interest. Don't be funny, Hackett. Oh, this is preposterous. My time's valuable. Oh, I beg your pardon, gentlemen. I'm sure your time's valuable, too. Oh, we're stuck. Oh, here's the alarm. Look. I think we could be here for hours. Oh. Well, nothing like this has ever happened before. But... What we take out of the ground was meant for everyone. There's electricity for light, heat, refrigeration, anything you want. Uranium is such a dense matter that in comparison, lead or gold are as light as this cork. Thanatos, Thanatos, Ertichis, Menos, Napeza. Να πεθάνει με στισμένο Όπα! Οι πες θα δώσουν τα παλιά Και τις μερίδες τις παλιές Τα προβόδεις τις he's singing about? He's singing about the happy song that the cook gives us food and a drink. You know, it's just occurred to me, we're not really at this table at all. We're still stuck in that damned lift. We wanted so badly to be out of it that we fantasized all this. This is just a figment of our imagination. <laughs> We're still stuck in the lift. <laughs> still up, Pat? Still up, up till midnight. Have a good evening? Yes, very, very good, thank you. Well, it's getting quite late, but the lights of the city are on all night. Again. I'll call you from Sydney. Right. Safe journey. It'll be a long haul. Yeah, thanks. Well, I'd like to say goodbye and to see you again.
Where's Dave? Oh. Oh. Is anything wrong? Can we be of help to you? Mana punya di nak kabar nerango. What's he saying? What does he want? You can tell us whatever it is. What does he want? He want that airplane. Oh, really? Why? We want that airplane in Mentabi. But there's no airfield in Mentabi. Well, of course, the airplane doesn't belong to us. It, it belongs to the Air Force. But, um, well, under certain circumstances, we might be able to arrange for you to have it. But you wouldn't be able to use it in Mintabi. There's, there's no runway. We will build the airfield. Gentlemen, if I might make a suggestion, um, perhaps you could watch my pilot take off and land so to show you what facilities you'd need at Mintabi. But, um, look, just give me a little time with my board of directors my tribal elders, but uh, I think we might be able to come to some mutual agreement with certain safeguards. Morning. Why didn't you knock? How long have you been here? For a little long while. Ten minutes? Yes. An hour? Yes. Overnight since yesterday evening? Yes, since yesterday evening, since the sun went down. What's going on? The run away is finished. Finished? <laughs> That's impossible. No, 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 no. Look, a caribou, a, a, a plane needs at least a, a half a mile of completely level ground. I'll have to get hold of the firm. We haven't taken this seriously enough. Look, I can supply some earth moving equipment, but you blokes will, you blokes will have to help, okay? Yes, we'll help. Good. Thank <laughs> you. 
After lunch, half of them piss off. That's all right. They like that, our black brothers. But listen to this. My caterpillar doesn't run anymore. Do you know why? I've no idea. Because during the lunch break, some of the younger ones knocked off the transmission fluid. And now they're out in the scrub in the bush, lying about, sniffing the fumes. My caterpillar! Bludgeon bastards! Bastards! My caterpillar doesn't run anymore. You need a holiday, Cole. Relax. Relax? You tell me to relax and my caterpillar doesn't run? What are you talking about? Why am I here? Well, it's not visible, but there's nowhere else in Australia where the Earth's magnetic field is so abnormally distorted. And you've measured that? Oh, yes, yes, of course. And because the green ant is the only living creature on Earth with a sensory organ attuned to magnetic fields, like a, a small green living compass. <laughs> I drive them crazy by beaming in additional magnetic fields. <laughs> here are capable of transforming whole landscapes. In less than a day they can build six-foot termite hills as hard as rock. They always align themselves north, south. They dig immense tunnel systems under the earth. They feed on wood. They gobble up everything. They can even chew through lead reinforced roofing to get at the wood beneath. They are not provided with a fully digestive system of their own, and so they live symbiotically with one-celled bacteria sites in their intestinal tracts. Biologically speaking, the green ant does not at all belong to the ant class. They only look that way. They're actually a kind of termite and belong more properly 
to the family of cockroaches. Well, what, what, you get me? What about the aborigines? I mean, why is it that they all... <laughs> yeah, the abos, the black fellas. They must have observed that our tiny friends are like weather vanes before a storm, like whole armies, they align themselves north. Uh. And then they stop in the middle of their tracks. That's when they're said to be dreaming. They dream of the dream time, of the origins of the world. Well, then, what I actually wanted to know... Uh, more... Yes, the ants are sexless. sexless. I hope you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, only once a year, they grow wings and fly east over the mountains in mammoth swarms. Only two individuals of that gigantic swarm assume sexual differentiation and mate. The female becomes the queen, and the male the courting prince. Now do you get me? The female lays 40,000 eggs a day, many times more than her own weight. She's immobilized in the heart of the structure. <laughs> she grows to a hundred times her original size. She grows to the size of almost two inches. And the male <laughs> remains tiny and fertilizes the eggs. He often seeks refuge under the queen. He's easily frightened. When the queen... I hope you can follow me. When the queen becomes sterile, a whole colony begins to die off. Warriors come. Ah. Uh, multitudes to lick the queen until she's licked to death. And then the new generation prepares to fly east over the mountain. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. You're welcome. A week from today, we'll meet each other in court. But Ayers Mining hopes that this will be seen as a sign of mutual consideration and mutual respect. Mr. Miliepi? Or Mr. Diaper? Come over here. You must be in the photo. How do you do? Hey, um, I just need one of you gentlemen to uh, sign for the receipt for this plane. Mr. Miliepi, perhaps. I would like to add to how pleased we are that you see the value of compromise. Can you get a, a photo over here, please? Good luck. Good luck for the caribou. And, uh, it's all yours. No, we'll sign. I'd like to get one of you gentlemen to sign this document. It's just a release form. It's a formality, but we do need it. Uh, Mr. Miller, you... Uh, Miller, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> please, I do need a signature. Oh, Mr. Dyke, no, perhaps no, you could sign it for me. It's just a formality. It's just... Um, a, I'm sorry, but I do need a signature. I do need a signature from someone. Um, uh, Mr. Dyke, please, I do need someone. I'm sorry, you can't go on board. Mr. Flexen! Mr. Flexen, please. 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 Come out, don't worry. Uh, can you please sign this? Look, I'm sorry, but I must have someone sign this document. What are we going to do? We just need to get this man's signature. Forget it. No, 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 don't worry about it. They've got their plane. They've got their plane. That's all they want. Philip, Philip, come on. Don't worry about it. We've got to hack it. Come here, hack it. No, look. We must, for insurance purposes, we must have someone sign this document. They've got their plane.
Oh, my God, they're setting the aircraft on fire. No, it's only a campfire on the floor there. I'll tell you what, we'll have to drain the fuel out of the wings, and after that it should be OK. All right, mate. Now listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you one thing. I was the only pilot, black pilot in the Air Force. And my captain, he said to me, Watson, you got class. No, <laughs> yeah. My baby does the hanky panky. No worries, still a half a tank of gas left here. My baby does the hanky panky. Silence, silence, all stand please and remain standing. All persons having business before this honourable court are commanded to give their attendance and they shall be heard. God save the Queen. Be seated please. I open the proceedings in the matter of Dayipu and others plaintiffs versus the two defendants, Ayers Mining Company and the Commonwealth of Australia, which is represented by the Solicitor General. I feel it's important to say at the outset that this case before this High Court is not merely one of Aborigines dispossessed of their ancestral land by the white man finding in the activities of Ayers Mining Company a final assault on their beliefs. It's also a case that raises fundamental moral questions of great complexity. We must here discover whether the Aboriginal plaintiffs hold, in fact, in common law, a land rights title valid before 1788 to territories annexed by Governor Philip who, by hoisting the flag, claimed all of this vast continent for the British crown. At this point, Your Honour, it might assist the court if I could uh, quote from Professor Ernst's uh, discussion of the uh, Damata Mala and Jamunda Mala. In this, he describes their claim to certain land a claim which goes back to unthinkably ancient times, what they call their dream time. He also explains their clan relationship, which he identifies as a Matamala combination. Uh, Professor Ernst uh, even speaks of a uh, Matamala pair. The clan is essentially a patrilineal descent group. 
which is strictly exogamous. In other words, each member of the clan may marry only into the other half of the Matamala combination. Now this brings us to the concept of the uh, so-called moiety. And I must stress that this area of anthropological theory is still highly speculative, not to say controversial. There are certain aspects of it indeed that lie within the realms of as yet unexplained mysteries. Objection, Your Honor. The Solicitor General. The witness is putting forward as expert evidence what are clearly presumptions and theories. He should be asked to confine himself to proven facts. Objection overruled. The court is competent to reach its own conclusions. Thank you, Mr. Coulthard. The witness will continue. I am going to ask you 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 to ask we can to tell you about the land, so our court can recognize the land that we live on. If the mining company coming and digging the hills or destroy the land, that means that destroy the people. You all want to know where you Nango culture, Nango, Tanya Nango, Kayena Nango, Kayong and Napian Nargo Comelia, Mind Company, Panemia Kamenok. That mining company come and destroy the land, and the uh, feeling of the people, and for that dreaming, green and dreaming. If you can uh, destroy the land, which is sacred land, a special area, dreaming land for green ants, if you're going to draw, that means you're going to destroy the the people, the green one, can you never come back again? The counsel for the plaintiff, please explain what is meant by that. In answer to a specific question relating to the precise limits of his territory, your witness answered with this gesture. Now, can you translate that into English? Please, Your Honour. Order. I call the Solicitor General to order. And on the question of the exact expanse of the tribal territory, I hear a little long way. Now, what I'd like to know... Mr. Coulthard, will you please restrain your boundless gift for irony? With your indulgence, Your Honour, I'm very angry that uh, evidence of this order should be admitted by the court, as well as repeated statements which are clearly hearsay by the Aboriginal witnesses. I order that the transcript of these proceedings be so written as to include indications of descriptive gestures by the plaintiffs. And I assure Mr. Coulthard that this court will decide, in this case and in all others before it, what is and what is not admissible evidence. Your Honour, I do not withdraw my objection. Mr. Coulthard, I trust I don't need to remind you of the elaborate representations by the plaintiff's attorney in the case the Shaga Indians versus the Dominion of Canada on the admissibility of evidence by the tribal witnesses as long ago as 1871. And as to your remark about hearsay, 
I'd like to remind you of the decision in the case Angu versus Atta before the Privy Council of the Gold Coast, West Africa in 1916. You are, of course, familiar with that decision. No, Your Honour, I'm sorry, I'm not. You're not? Then would you be so kind as to inform yourself on this case? In Angu versus Atta, the African indigenous reporting on tribal customs gave evidence essentially founded in hearsay and in such overwhelming frequency that these testimonies became so widely attested as to condense into a palpable truth. And the court had to take judicial notice of them and henceforth recognize hearsay as admissible evidence. And in my view, the, uh, the proceedings before this court today form a close parallel with those proceedings I have referred to. Progress. Here, you talk about progress over and over again. And where does it lead the Aborigine? It is progress into nothingness. What have the last 200 years brought? Extinction. And where that wasn't radical enough, cultural extermination by the white civilization. Simple outright murder was only part of it. Order. This court is not a forum for political oratory. Let me get back to the disputed numerical concept of the Aborigine. Their relationship to quantities is distinguished completely from ours. It is not subject to abstract enumeration. Therefore, in most tribal languages, there are only numbers from one through to three. Everything beyond that is called many. However, if a black cattleman has a herd of 600 cows together enclosed in a corral, he will know at a glance, without even counting, that two cows are missing. We still have rudiments of this ability. If, for example, a mother with six children is loading suitcases on a train in a crowd at the station, and one of the children escapes to the milk bar, that mother would know with a single glance, without counting, that one is missing. Mr. Malila, you were not called to the stand. Mr. Miliripi, could you please make this clear to Mr. Malila? Your Honour, I'm afraid I cannot speak his language. The plaintiff, Mr. Malila, was introduced to the court as mute at the start of these proceedings. I feel slightly confused. Is there anyone among the plaintiffs or witnesses who can translate? The situation, Your Honour, is this man is the sacred custodian to the secrets of his tribe, and his tribe has died out. He is the sole and final survivor of his people, his clan. They call him the mute because there's nobody left on this earth for him to speak with.
Mr. Millie Ritby. Your Honor, we come, we are to show you the most important sacred object. While we belong and for the land, please, I want you to remove the people. If they seen this sacred object, the world must destroy. Motion accepted. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please leave the court? Mr. Miller, it be. You are aware, however, that uh, for reasons concerning the very nature of these proceedings, the defendant, as well as the court reporter, must be present. This sacred object is a very, very important. This sacred object has been buried in the ground for 200 years. And now we come and sell you to prove what the land is belong, and belong to the land is. Most important to our life, to our feeling. And how should I record this, Your Honor? Uh, wooden objects carved with markings the markings indecipherable. The significance of the markings not plain to this court. Silence, silence, all stand and remain standing. Be seated, please. For all the reasons given, my decision must be for the defendants. The claims of the plaintiffs for radical legal title to the territories in question are rejected. This title lies, as before, with the Crown. The claims of the Aborigines do not accord with the prevailing English common law, which, though imported, is nonetheless, perhaps regrettably, the law of the land. I am most grateful for the dignity and eloquence with which all parties have argued this difficult case. The action of the plaintiffs is dismissed. The cost of the proceedings will be paid by the Commonwealth. If you don't want my opinion, don't bloody ask for it. What's got into you, Hackett? Look, you're talking about a, a settlement out of court, but what have they got to negotiate with? They've got nothing left. Wonderful job, Eric. My profound congratulations. Listen, we destroyed the bastards. <laughs> now, look, no court in the world can pass judgment on 200 years of history. Look, what do you eat for breakfast, eh? Raisin bran? How do you sleep? You sleep well? With the air conditioning on? How are your thoroughbreds? What's wrong with you? Whose side are you on? Oh, sorry, sir. Do you want me to have a talk with you? I bought you some food. Can I ask you a question? Yes. 
tell me, why is it you sometimes and Daipo pretty well all the time just sit here looking east? Because in the east is the spirit land and special area that the green land had been disappeared, never come back. So that's your dreaming land? Yes. I see. I'll roll your smoke. I've never done this before. I used to be fullback in the squadron rugby team. Watson, the captain he said, hey, you can play fullback. And could I fly? I bet I was even better than that captain. So you flew a plane, a real plane? Of course I did. I flew. I tell you, one day we had the circulars out there, full up. And that captain said to me, I can't get this big fat bugger off this ground. I said, Captain, just let me handle it. I just gave it that throttle. <laughs> hey, I got that plane off the ground. That captain couldn't. I don't believe it. I'll show you, mob.
I think we got a problem. You know, your, your black fellas. Heck it, they've taken the plane. What? They've taken the plane. I've been having this dream lately. Everyone in the world is running away. And all carrying little packages as big as lunch boxes of their most precious things. Thousands of them. Running and stumbling. And I can't run with them. I've got to go to school and it's a Catholic school. A nun comes up to me and grabs me by the arm and drags me into a circle of other nuns and school kids and they all shout at me, where's your lunchbox? And I can't answer. I get frightened and I piss my pants. And the piss just keeps coming and coming. It runs in a little stream out along the ground. And first the nuns, and then the school kids, open a pathway to let it trickle on through. And they 
keep staring at me. It's never really happened to me. It's never really bothered me, but I feel I'm in that. I'm in that situation. A5 is negative, B5 is negative, C5 is negative, and fucking D5 is negative. But the plane had only enough fuel for 40 minutes. Yeah, it's a puzzle, isn't it? There are enough ravines in those mountains for him to go down in. It looks as though we're going to have to start this whole shit fight all over again. Some tribal Aborigines arrived yesterday from up in the mountains. Maybe they've got something to say. They just sit there saying nothing. You know the way they do? Yeah. You find out what you can from those black bastards. They seem to like to want to speak with you. I'll do that. They can ride bicycles and they can drive motor cars. Now they think they can fly fucking aeroplanes. ago they spoke you listened for yourself they have heard the green ants with a big wing. You know, Mr. Hackett, there's a little green ant, a trap on the ground. And these people, they found it on the mountain, big, big wings. They found a wing? They found the plane.
Rosa colocado, pelota para la Rosa, ya está colocado Pasarela, va llevando la pelota a Rosa, va Pasarela, ataca Pasarela, va Holguín entrando, pelota para Kempe, busca el área, se va llevando la pelota, se metió en la área penal, sigue avanzando, resta corto el defensor, carga Bertoni, va a sacar el tiro bajo, hay un rebote, entra la Rosa, tira de zurda, y el arquero echa baloteando al córner, cuarto córner para Argentina, va a tirar el número 4 Bertoni, vamos Argentina, ¿Dónde está Bartola Tarantini? Viene el centro, entra Mario, cabeceo Tarantini, gol, 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 What's the news? They found the plane. Up near Unadetta. Indeed. This is nice. Are these easy to come by? There's my old water tank still out there. Thanks. <laughs> 